Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and today we're going to talk about diet and inflammation and um, how you can lower inflammation levels with your diet. So according to a new study of over a thousand Chinese women, eating cruciferous vegetables can lower inflammation levels and markers of inflammation. Now, I think you all know what cruciferous vegetables are, but just to be clear, we're talking about foods like cabbage and Brussels sprouts, broccoli, bok choy, bok choy kale, and cauliflower. In other words, all the stuff we didn't want to eat when we were kids, but we don't mind eating now, now that they're prepared properly. Um, inflammation's been getting a lot of attention lately, and that's rightly so, because there is a big connection between between inflammation and all kinds of diseases, so we should pay attention to it. But there are people who are suggesting that inflammation results from eating a high carbohydrate plant-based diet, and actually the opposite is true. So the researchers in this particular study stated at the beginning that there are intake of, that uh, according to animal studies, intake of cruciferous vegetables or nutrients from them lowered inflammation. So they wanted to see if the same thing would happen in humans. So. They took uh, over a thousand Chinese women. They were average of 58 years of age, and they were divided into five groups according to their daily intake of cruciferous vegetables. The average intake was about a cup a day. The ones at the very low end were consuming about half that amount. The ones at the upper end were consuming about a cup and a half of cruciferous vegetables a day. The researchers then looked at inflammatory markers for inflammation, inflammation like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-6, um, and they compared that with the dietary intake of cruciferous vegetables, and they found that those markers were 13 and 25% lower, respectively, for those women who ate the most cruciferous vegetables as opposed to those who ate the least. Now, I like the study because it reports a mechanism of action for healthy foods, but I want to remind everybody that it really is the dietary pattern we want to focus on. In other words, if you're eating the standard American diet, a handful of Brussels sprouts every day is not going to change your health outcomes. So we want to keep in mind that the focus is on uh, a dietary pattern that leads to health, which is focused on the four main food groups, fruit, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. And in that vegetable category, if we can throw a few more cruciferous vegetables in there, um, that's a great idea. And back to what I said in the beginning, a lot of these foods we didn't so much like as children because they weren't prepared very well. I know I didn't used to be a great fan of Brussels sprouts, but now I'll eat them until I'm stuffed. You know, you slice them in half and uh, toss them in a little bit of uh, balsamic vinaigrette and maple syrup and bake them on a cookie sheet, and oh my gosh, you can just eat them forever. They're delicious. So this is not hard to do. Eat some more cruciferous vegetables. All right, now the next topic regarding inflammation has to do with whole grains and inflammation. And as you know, grain bashing is the rage these days, and it's fueled by these silly books like Grain Brain and Wheat Belly, and I've read both of them. And I just want to tell you, the quality of research really doesn't meet the standard that we have for undergraduate students at the Institute. It's, it's incredibly disappointing, not only that these people write these terrible books, but people in our industry, my colleagues, some of them are thinking that this is great stuff. But these folks make a lot of noise, they get a lot of attention, we have to respond to them. So one common claim is that grains cause inflammation and that's the mechanism of action that they use to explain how grain eating can cause everything from erectile dysfunction to cancer. But controlled studies show the opposite, that grains can actually lower inflammation. This is a very interesting study I'm gonna to report to you here. Iranian researchers took 44 overweight or obese girls who were between the ages of 8 and 15 and they were randomized to two groups, one that incorporated whole grains into their diet and the control group that just ate regularly. Girls in the whole grain group were given a list of foods, of whole grain foods that they could eat and they were asked to make sure that half of their grain consumption uh, was whole grains. The rest of it could be refined and processed foods. There was a washout period and crossover, and so bottom line, at the end of the day, here's what it said. Eating whole grains didn't change their weight or BMI, and that's not surprising because there wasn't a change in, in their dietary pattern. But there was a big decrease um, in inflammatory markers, 22% to 28% decrease in inflammatory markers for the girls eating whole grains. The girls in the control group experienced 6 to 12% increases in those same inflammatory markers. Now, there are several important things to talk about here. Overweight people have higher levels of inflammation because their fat cells uh, produce inflammatory cytokines. 
These overweight girls, they didn't lose weight, remember, they still showed lower levels of inflammatory markers, even though their weight didn't change. They didn't convert to a program of dietary excellence. In fact, they were allowed to consume half of the grains in refined form. So it's just the addition of the whole grains that are responsible for the effect. And the rapidity of the effect, only six weeks, is kind of notable. This isn't the only study that has shown that whole grain consumption promotes health. I mean, healthy populations have lived on whole grains for all of recorded history. Research has shown that increasing whole grain consumption results in increases in the gut microbiota indicative of lowered systemic inflammation. And studies show that a low-fat plant-based diet can stop and reverse disease, and those studies have included the consumption of whole grains. I'm talking about Dr. Barnard's studies and Dr. Esselstyn's studies. The grain bashing industry, in my opinion, is using pseudoscience to the extent that they even cite science, and often they don't, to promote its dietary philosophy, which I think is just a repackaging of the Atkins diet. You know, the Atkins name fell out of favor, and you really can't promote that anymore, but they've packaged it up in a different form, because if you read these people's books and look at what they're telling people, they're telling people to eat a lot of animal foods, eat meat and dairy and fish and all that sort of thing. So, um, you know, when you get that kind of information from a doctor, good news about your bad habits, uh, it sells well. But you know what? I think uh, people like to hear good news about eating potatoes and bread. I personally love those foods and pasta. I think most people do. And a lot of folks are pretty relieved when they come in here to find out that those foods are, are back on the dinner plate. And of course, I'm not talking about French fries. I'm talking about baked potatoes. I'm not talking about um, uh, eating Wonder Bread and White Bread. I'm talking about whole grain breads and that sort of thing. But uh, most people like those foods and they're pretty happy that they can include them in their diet. All right, that's all for today. It's all for the week as usual. We'll pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next Tuesday.